Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm Saji Sharma, and you don't know who I am. You have no idea. How can you trust anything I'm saying or have said? What if I'm a grifter? Hey, inclusivity is what's making the money right now. All the big brands were doing it. What if this DIY setup was made to be intimate on purpose so you would think I'm more genuine? What if I'm Brett Cooper, but for the libs? Well, there are a few things to make it easier to trust me. For one, I'm a person of color. So when I discuss things like prejudice or racism, it's a little easier to trust me because I speak from related experiences. Now, what if I told you that one of the experiences that I decided to share to prove a point or to make a joke is completely made up or even over-exaggerated just to prove a point or to hit a punchline? Would you feel betrayed or manipulated? Well, I can tell you that I haven't done that and I don't plan on doing it, but one of my favorite comedians did, or at least that's what I was told and I B believed what I was told and you know as a fellow comedian <laughs> what you just called yourself a comedian I mean I like to think I am I tell jokes people laugh do they okay how do you know that I don't know they t tell me that I'm, I'm funny and you believe them well I you don't know who they are you have no idea they could be lying through their teeth or bots for all you know I mean I don't I don't know. Next time you wanna call yourself a comedian, why don't you perform in front of a real audience first? What are you, the, the comedy police? <laughs> no, it's comedy cop. Officer comedy cop to you. Oh, shit. And as someone who's been doing this for the past 17 years, I can confidently tell you that this is a terrible segue into your intro. Your bit goes way too off topic. I don't know what you're talking about, officer. I think this is a perfectly fine- Yeah, word. this is officer punchline. We have a violation of code hook, line, and sinker. I repeat, violation of code hook, line, and sinker. Let's get this intro playing. We've already taken up too much time. Yes, sir. On it, Chief. Who are you talking to? Mainframe? You don't get to decide get the where each section of my video starts and ends. I've planned and everything out so that it works well together. You don't, you don't get to do that for me. You don't... Today, I'm going to be talking about comedian and political commentator Hassan Minhaj. There has been some controversy surrounding his stand-up sets and whether or not he is fabricating his stories just to hit emotional beats. I also want to mention that this video isn't just about Hassan, it's also about the distrust and skepticisms of liberal media. So if you don't care about Hassan, that's fine, but this video is more than that. But first, I want to... So sorry, I smell really bad. I am, I am super stinky and gross and just disgusting. Like I, I am such a stinky little man. Well, thank God for the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Do you care about what people think about you? I certainly do. In fact, it's all I think about, which is why I care so much about how I smell. Now, I've never gone out of my way to try different fr fragrances before. I've had the same bottle of cologne for the past two years. So it's actually been really cool to go through the process of trying new scents. Scentbird sent me four fragrances to try, three of which I really enjoy. Santa Jardine's Venus of Verbena is really bright and very citrusy, kind of makes me feel like I'm on vacation. Juliet has a guns, not a perfume, has a more feminine smell that I really like and is very elegant. And English Laundry's Midnight Gold is just a super confident smelling scent that makes me feel like a man. There are notes of citrus in there as well, but with more earthy notes on top, creating a more intense fragrance overall. And what's great about Scentbird is that they are a fragrance subscription service, so you don't have to worry about not liking a fragrance as you get to try new ones every month for just $17. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply to try new fragrances before deciding if you want to buy the full-size bottle. Make sure to click the link below to visit Scentbird's website or scan this QR code and use code SAJI for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. And thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring this video. So who is Hassan Minaj? Hassan is, first and foremost, a stand-up comedian who started in the San Francisco area. He worked a plethora of different comedy and acting jobs until he landed the role of a correspondent for The Daily Show in 2014. He went on to host his own show called Called the Patriot Act on Netflix, as well as putting out two of his own stand-up specials. Now you might be thinking, oh, Saji, he's a brown guy that does comedy. You must have been inspired by him because you're a brown guy that does comedy too. 
but but isn't a comedian. Well, actually, no, I wasn't, which I don't think is a weird thing to say. And it's okay, I'm not going to call you racist for thinking that. After all, I did put those words in your mouth. But I didn't even start YouTube to do comedy. I started because I like to create videos. And then people thought I was funny, so I kind of leaned into that. I actually made a whole video about my relationship with YouTube that YouTube didn't really like, so you should totally watch it after this video. However, although I wasn't directly inspired by his comedy, I was inspired by his success and the things he's achieved as a second generation Indian American. So I guess you were kind of right. I even took my dad to go see his King's Jester tour. Hey, look. And see, I still have the ticket. Ha <laughs> ha. Focus. Focus. See? Hassan Minhaj, King's Jester Tour. Anyway, it's safe to say that Hassan Minhaj has had an impact on me. He's had an impact on my family. My dada doesn't even know how to connect to Wi-Fi, and he still knows who Hassan Minhaj is. Not only that, but he's shown me new limits on where I can go as an Indian American in the entertainment industry. So it's safer to say that I was pretty affected when the New Yorker article came out. The article, titled Hassan Minhaj's Emotional Truths, stunned me. This article, written by a well-established and well-credited company, says that Hassan is a liar. It says that a lot of his stand-up anecdotes are untrue, specifically the ones that carry a lot of weight. Stories in which he discusses issues like experiencing racism as a teenager, FBI involvement in the Muslim community, and being scared for you and your family's life. Now, if this article was written about virtually any other comedian but specifically any other white comedian, I wouldn't have really cared. Comedians embellish stories all the time. It's a, a part of the job. But Hassan is more than a comedian. He is a political commentator. He was on two political shows where there has to be research and there has to be evidence. So when he turns around and he does his stand-up specials, the audience doesn't perceive him any differently. Sure, now things are more personal, but I still trust that the information he is giving out about living as a marginalized person will be accurate because I have no reason to expect less. So when this article came out, I was thoroughly upset. Fabricating a story about experiencing racism just to prove a point or hit a punchline isn't okay. Making up harmful things an FBI informant did, a real person, isn't okay. Faking a story that your daughter was exposed to anthrax and you had to rush her to the hospital isn't okay. Writing a hit piece on a comedian and leaving out facts and telling half-truths when you yourself as a journalist are doing just that is not okay. And very, very ironic, Claire Malone. So yes, around two months after, Hassan released a video discussing the article and the claims within. He went into great detail, fact-checking everything it said, even going as far as to bring up interview clips from him and the journalist Claire Malone. Now, I still wasn't just hopping on board, I still had some skepticism. My main transgression was that Hassan used the emotional factor of racism to falsify stories and make the audience feel something. Faking racism isn't cool. But this was a genuine and honest response. It wasn't an apology, it was a rebuttal. He says the article paints him as a crazy person. He brings up email receipts and texts and audio recordings. I mean, this is as thorough as you can get. After watching this video, it's clear that The New Yorker had an agenda. I and a lot of other people had been tricked by this usually very reputable and liberal news source. But we should have been a little bit more skeptical about a white person saying a person of color faked racism. I'll be honest, I kind of felt really stupid after. I mean, l look at how this article starts. The comedian Hassan Minhaj came of age as a practicing Muslim in an Indian family in post 9 11 America. I mean, that's kind of absurd. A practicing Muslim in an Indian family in post 9 11 America? Or even here, where they Describe him as an Asian American and Muslim American. I mean, what if that's how I started this video? Today I'm going to be talking about Hassan Minhaj, practicing Muslim in post 9 11 America, post post Osama bin Laden America. He is an Indian American who, did I mention, practices Islam? Why don't they describe John Oliver like this? I mean, he's an immigrant. Oh, no, okay, he just gets to be charming. One other big thing that stuck out to me in the article was regarding the FBI informant. In Hassan's special, he brings up the story of Brother Eric, an FBI informant that infiltrates m mosques and Muslim communities in order to coerce young Muslim boys into giving false confessions. In the article, Claire Malone decided to talk to Montel or Brother Eric in order to get the truth. 
prior to my meeting with Minhaj Montel, aka Brother Eric, had told me that Minhaj's story is a fabrication. I have no idea why he would do that, Montel said. Montel was in prison in 2002 and didn't begin to work for the FBI on counterterrorism measures until 2006. Oh, he waited four years. What a great guy. Like, okay, who are we going to believe here? The comedian who's talking about the issue that disproportionately affects his community or the white man who's helping cause the issue. Yeah, I don't know how this article got me, seriously. The last thing Hassan discussed in this video was about the anthrax scare, and he did admit to over-dramatizing that. There was fake anthrax, but it was near, not on his daughter, and there was no hospital. He said he wanted to recreate the danger that him and his wife felt during that time. Which is fine, he did twist things a little bit, but I don't really care if I'm being honest, because again, he's a comedian. The New Yorker, however, is not under the niche of comedy. They are under the niche of, I expect you to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth. So why is that not what we got? Well, maybe it's because the l liberal media is sneakier than they seem. That's right, I said it. The libs only give fake media. I mean, that s sentence is partially true. Maybe less so because of the accent, but a lot of news is very biased in this empire that we call America. And I wanted to talk about this instance of slander and misinformation because we are living in a time where there is more of it than ever. And this time I'm not talking about the silly TikToks that lead people down the alt-right pipeline. I'm talking about one of the biggest humanitarian crises and ethnic cleansings of our time. Innocent Palestinian lives are being taken and US news is still trying to find ways to excuse it. This is one of the most extreme cases of sidestepping and blatant ignorance I've ever seen and it's disgusting. A lot of liberals will jump to defend their news sources and call out more conservative ones but ultimately fail to realize that well, they all have one common goal, and that is to make as much money as possible. And every so often, the ugly truth hidden behind comes out. This New Yorker article is, unfortunately, just the tip of the iceberg. It doesn't matter how woke or LGBTQ friendly these companies say they are. At the end of the day, if you're marginalized, you will still be seen as less than. Just like Hassan, just like the Palestinians, although to two very different degrees. I have linked a few journalists, reporters, and photographers who are giving real-time information on what is happening in Gaza. I recommend checking them out if you are looking for reliable news coming from the area. And always be hesitant, even when you hear things from me. But that's gonna wrap up the video. Uh, if you're new, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. B -b -b bye God, I'm always so fucking bad at those, Jesus.